hope you have your Bible, something to take notes with. We finished today our series on how to influence, how to increase your influence. And really, it's all about being kinder. Whoa, that's a word we don't hear about so much right now, kindness. Pastor, I was telling someone on staff yesterday in our one-on-one meeting, I said, why do you think I've been talking about random acts of kindness to offset what's going on out there? People are mean, cruel, indignant. They're aggressive, attacking, selfish, greedy, jealous, envious, mad, road rage, more than I've ever seen in my lifetime. So what do I have to do as your pastor teach you loves you? I have to offset that because you're out there 167 hours a week and you're with me for one hour a week. Y'all pray for me. I feel like resigning right now after I think about that. And so we're talking about kindness because if you want to stand out at work, just be kind. If you want to get more tips, if you're a waiter or a waitress, just be kind. If you want doors to open, if you don't want to blend in like the crowd and stand out, just be kind. So we're talking about how to increase your influence. If you haven't been with us, we're so glad you're with us today. Go to our website. You can download all the series on how to increase your influence. Because I believe all of us want to make a difference. We don't want to waste our life. We don't want to coast through life. We don't want to be at the end of our life and regret our life. We don't want to be dead until we die. Come on, somebody. And so we're talking about all month, and we finish today, brand new series next weekend. But how to, and next weekend, we start a brand new series. Are you ready for this? How to deal with difficult people. Don't look at anybody right now. Don't look at anybody. So y'all going to pray for me, right? Amen. All right, so we're talking about the ministry of good works. Now, stay with me. You know, if you're new to our church, you haven't been here, you've been on vacation, I get it, I understand, but stay with me because I'm giving you the answer to every problem in your life. I think it's called the golden rule, isn't it right? Do unto others, not what they've done unto you, but do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think the Bible calls it sowing and reaping. I think the world calls it what goes around comes around, right? Did, did you know if you need a healing today, all you need to do is a good work? Really, Pastor? I think I read it in the book of James. It, it says that if you need a healing, pray for other people who need a healing so that you might be healed. Did you know that's in the Bible? That's in the New Testament, the book of James. It says if you're sick, pray for sick people and you'll get healed. It's that, it's that principle that we've looked at all month. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. We quoted Zig Ziglar, didn't we? Oh, Zig, he's in heaven. Zig, he said, if you help enough people in life get what they want, you'll eventually get what you want. The ministry of good works. So let's look at it. Matthew 5. Uh, the Bible says we are the salt of the earth. Uh, in 14, it says, you're the light of the world. Now is not the time to hide our faith. We're a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. Uh, it goes on to say there in verse 16, let your light shine. Remember the song in Sunday school, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, what is that light? Bible interprets Bible. What is that light? Good works. You see that, family? Let your light shine before men that they'll see your good works. So we're to be a sermon before they hear. I'm coming over here. Y'all are more. Uh, we're to be a sermon before they hear a sermon. The Bible calls us living letters. Living letters. Like the letters to the epistles in the New Testament. But you and I are the message. You and I are the sermon. You and I are the, the sermon that some people will only hear. They'll never enter a church. But you work with them. You live with them. You live next door to them. You're on the campus with them. And you're the only sermon some people will ever hear. Let your light shine that your good works, not your degree, not you have to go through Bible school, have to know the Bible from cover to cover. You just got to be born again and be changed like Zacchaeus 
and just to begin to be kind, new morals, new conduct, new habits, and it'll rock your world. And people want to know, how did you change? And it opens the door for you to tell them who changed you. And it will glorify or make God look good. Now, here's an amazing verse. Stay with me, family. We have become his poetry. We're created people. And what are we to do? Set, soak, and sour? No. What do we do? Hold the fort? No. Uh, we are to fulfill the destiny. Everyone in this room and everyone at church at home, you have a destiny. You, you were made on purpose for a purpose. You are not a mistake. You have a destiny. Destiny is short for destination. All of us are on a journey towards the destination. Someone said the journey is more important than the destination. It's who you're becoming, right? It's who you're becoming determines where you're going. It's not a good day if I didn't grow that day. I'm coming over here. Now y'all got quiet. How do you know if this is a good day? Did I grow today? It's a good day. If I didn't grow today, I wasted. I wasted that day. We're to go from glory to glory, faith to faith, right? All right, so look what he says, that we're recreated people to fulfill the destiny that he's given each one of us. We're joined to Jesus, the anointed one, even before you were born. Church at home, listen. Eve, put that coffee down, okay? Put that Krispy Kreme down just for a second. Even before we were born, God planned in advance. Our destiny, now watch this family, don't miss this. Please don't miss this. You don't get anything else, get this. On advance, our destiny and conjunction, the good works that we would do to fulfill our destiny. Family, without good works, we cannot fulfill our destiny. Our good works are tied to our destiny. Uh, let me just share it with you this way. This is powerful. I haven't shared this. This is powerful. This is worth coming to church today. Is that every God dream, and you all have one, if you haven't discovered it, will help you in our God is for you classes. Discover your God-given dream, what you're on earth for. But when God gives us a dream, it requires God's resources to pull it off. When God gives us a dream, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than our net worth. It's bigger than our network. It's bigger than our resources. If we have a dream from God, we can't pull it off on our own. We don't have enough on our own. Listen very carefully. When God gives you a God-sized dream, you need God's resources. Watch this now. But good works attracts God's resources to fulfill your God dream. Did you hear what I just said? Good works are essential because your good works attracts God's resources to fulfill your destiny or God's dream. Many of you have heard this story. I can't think of a better one. When Kim and I came here 40 years ago to plant church on the rock with 35 people, there was an elderly couple in the community. They were in their 70s, were in our 30s. They didn't even attend our church, but they were the accountants for the people who own this property. They came and met with me. I cast vision. We had just 100 people at that time. And from that time forth, they begin to give, they're in heaven today, hundreds of thousands of dollars into this ministry. Every project, they would do a matching fund. I mean, they were given high, and they didn't, they weren't members of our church. Uh, they, they weren't a part of our church, but they believed in the vision and the mission. What you believe in, you give to. What you believe in, you give to. Side note, what you believe in, you give to. If you believe in Church on the Rock, you will give to Church on the Rock. So they gave hundreds of thousands of dollars. I asked them one time, Tex, that was his name, Helen, that was her name, why have you given all this money to our church? And you don't, you don't even attend our church. They, they weren't even full gospel. They didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but they believed in the vision and the mission of Church on the Rock. And here's what they told me. You were the only preacher that ever sent us a thank you card. 
That random act of kindness, a thank you card, we call it good works, attracted the resources of hundreds of thousands of dollars from one couple to support this vision and ministry of Church on the Rock. So maybe today, you emailing somebody, you texting somebody, not for what you can get, but what you can give, how you can impact their life. Y'all remember that we talked about how self-leadership and self-mastery and, and we're all to work on ourselves before we work on other people? You know, why take the, the toothpick out of somebody else's eye when I got a telephone pole in my own eye? You know, that's why you, you notice I never get in your stuff because, you know, I got enough stuff of my own. So don't you get in my stuff because I know you got enough stuff of your own. All of God's people got stuff. Amen. But, but, but it's, real, it's real important that you and I understand how, how all of this works. Self-mastery, self-leadership. I got to work on me. You got to work on you before you work on anybody else. Why gripe about the toothpick on somebody else's eye when that very same problem I have in my life is magnified? I have enough psychology to hurt people and from college to be dangerous. And here's what they taught me in college on psychology. Usually what people gripe about is their own problem. Hallelujah. People who gripe about money in the church have a money problem. People who talk about sin all the time in the church have a Sin. Okay, we'll just keep going. I want you to stay with me now. But, but look at this. God planned in advance our destiny and the good works that we would do to fulfill it. So don't forget this. Don't forget this, that, that God's dream requires God's resources, and your good works will attract those resources God has to fulfill your dream. So that means every day you and I want to look for ways to sow, to plant, to be kind, mow a yard, cook a meal, Pay someone's utility bill. God's dream requires God's resources, and they come through good works. Oh, my goodness. In a world filled with uncertainties, challenges, and triumphs, Pastor Blunt reminds us of the eternal truth that God is for you. Join us on a journey of faith, love, and divine support with Pastor David Blunt's new book, God is for you. A lot of people have the wrong picture of God, the wrong image of God, the wrong understanding of God. This book, God is for you, will give people the proper picture of who God is, that God is a good God, that God loves you, that God has a plan for your life, and that God is for you. God is for you reminds us that regardless of our circumstances or past mistakes, God is on our side. God is for you is available now on our website. Visit cotr.org slash book to order your copy today. Proverbs eleven twenty seven. 27, look family, he that or she that is diligently seeking to do good. Whoa. So, so that self mastery, we said you, you have to do number one, know your strengths. And we help you with that with our God is for you classes on Sunday. Know your weaknesses. Pastor, I don't got no weaknesses. Let me talk to your wife after church. Let me talk to your kids after youth group. Praise the Lord. But notice, notice that we work on our strengths. Number two, we work on our weaknesses. Number three, self-mastery, self-leadership, getting better, is we, we want to know how we impact other people. What's it like to be on the other side of you? What's it like to work with you? What do they say behind your back at the water cooler? What, what, what do people say when you're not in the room? What do they say about you, your weakness, your strength? Do they avoid you and say, oh, here comes Mr. and Mrs. Negativity? Or are you known for being positive and edification and building people up? Uh, am I noted for being jealous? Am I noted for, for, for being envious? Am I noted for being a gossiper? Or am I noted for giving people a good word? What's it like to be on the other side of me? It's called self-aware. Self-leadership, self-mastery. Well, what is it like? What am I known for? Good works or bad works? Greedy or generous? More than enough second miler or, or late to work and leave early? What am I known for? Notice, I want to be known for, you want to be known for doing good. Random acts of kindness. And what's that going to do for you? I shared four weeks ago. It's going to open doors for you. 
It's going to give you favor. Y'all see that in that verse, everybody? Those who look for intentionally get up on Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, all day Saturday, look for opportunities to be a blessing, to encourage, to edify, to, to believe in other people's dreams, other people's desires, to help them come to pass. Those who are seeking to do good, you secure you are a magnet. You attract favor. And we need favor, family. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come upon them. It's called that boomerang. What I do, it may not come back today, but it will come back. Forty years in one place in this church. And here's what I found out. What we're doing today as a ministry is not for today. It's for the future. The seeds I'm planting, the things I'm doing won't come up in this season, but they will come up in my future. So you've got to understand that, Pastor, I don't feel like being kind. Well, join the human race. Pastor, some days I don't feel saved. Amen. So be it. Yes, sir. I agree. Yes, ma'am. But what do we do? We move past our feelings. We move past our emotions. We move past the masses and the crowd and the majority. And you'll stand out. You'll stick out simply by being kind. And that kindness will come back to you. Acts 10, 38. Y'all still with me, everybody? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Holy Spirit has the power to change my nature. I can go from being an immoral person to being a moral person. I can go from being an impure to a pure person. I can change my habits. I can change my nature. You ever got born again and then you went back to a class reunion from your school? They didn't know you. They didn't recognize you because your conduct has changed. Your behavior had changed. Your habits had changed. Where you go had changed. Who did that? The power of the Holy Spirit. Can people change? Yes. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can all change. We can all improve. We can all grow. We can all get free. We can all overcome. Come on, let's have a praise make, everybody. How God anointed, anointed. Everybody say anointed. Ooh, there's an anointing that comes on you when you're doing good works. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth of the Holy Ghost with power, who went, what was he anointed for? Who went about doing good. One translation says he had a reputation of doing good works. Uh, let's, let's don't belittle good works, being kind, being nice, a card, a text, an email, mow a yard, pick a pie, pay for a meal, pay for the car note their car payment, whatever it might be, house, utilities. Don't, don't play that down. There's an anointing. There's an anointing for good works. There's an anointing. Uh, uh, there's an experience with God. There's an encounter with God for having a reputation of doing good works. You know, Daniel, our executive pastor, you know, Daniel is our executive pastor, but before he was that, he was over our outreach. Some of you oldies, you remember when we used to give food boxes away every Saturday? We delivered. Do you remember what we used to? He was over our sidewalk Sunday school. Remember we had a truck that would go out, the side would go down, and we'd have actually Sunday school in the neighborhoods. Remember that? The outreaches. Do, do you remember that, that years ago that we would go over into St. Louis and Kenlock, and we'd go over into St. Louis down by the stadium? And we adopted public schools. Do you remember that? Some of you oldies, you remember that? We'd adopt public schools, and we would go in those public schools, and back to school right now, we'd give out backpacks. Y'all remember that? We'd give out backpacks. Uh, and then on Thanksgiving, we'd go down, we'd give meals at Christmas, we would do stuff. Uh, we, even, we even would remodel public schools in St. Louis County. So much so, we were known for good works. At that time, he's no longer now the superintendent 
of the public school system of St. Louis, Missouri. He would talk about Church on the Rock publicly. He would do news conferences with, with all the channels locally talking about Church on the Rock and how we had changed the public school system of St. Louis, Missouri. I kind of miss those days of outreach. The superintendent of the public school system back then never talked about one of my sermons, never talked about any of my series, never crossed the river to come to our church, but he knew our good works. And our good works gave favor to the superintendent over all the schools where he basically gave me carte blanche of whatever we wanted to do, we could do to be a blessing in St. Louis County. I miss those days. Maybe God's speaking to you to pick the baton up and make that ministry go again, our outreach ministry at Church on the Rock. All I'm waiting for is somebody. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, our team is coming out. What about doing good? There's an anointing. I went down there. Yeah. When we did those outreaches, I went down there. When we did those outreaches, I was painting walls. I was mowing yards. Oh, yeah. I was handing out turkeys. Oh, yeah, I went to all of them when I could because there was something about, I'm seriously, there was an anointing that came on me doing good works that I never got from behind the pulpit teaching. There's something special about reaching out with kindness and respect and reverence and blessing somebody, encouraging somebody, equipping somebody, assisting somebody, helping somebody, letting them know that God is for them. Let's have a praise break, can we, church? Just real quickly, I want you to see that good works will win your husband to the Lord. Good works will, will win your wife, your children, your neighbors, those you work with, your co-workers, your supervisor. It can win them to the Lord. Good works. You know what I found out here? I've been here 40 years. The loudest people usually don't have the greatest impact. I've been here 40 years. The loudest people usually don't have the greatest impact. I'm talking about in the community. It's usually those kind of soft, silent, laid back, but active, busy that make the biggest impact. That's scripture. You know that, right? In 1 Peter chapter 3, it's talking about husbands and wives. And it says, wives, you can win your husband with a quiet spirit. Now, I'm not telling all the wives to be quiet, okay? Don't think. I uh, have favor with all the women. Amen. Praise God. They love their pastor if they want to go to heaven. Praise God. What, what, what I'm saying is just by your conduct, you don't have to preach. At, husbands and wives don't have to preach at each other. Just live it. Just be it. Just respond like a... Last week I told you that... Two weeks ago I said, let's don't respond like the Democrats right now. Let's don't... Re See how quiet it gets. Let's don't respond like the Republicans right now. Oh, it's even quieter. Let's don't respond like the libertarians right now. Let's don't respond like white people or black people or brown people. Let's respond like Christians. So look at this family. Merciful kindness through holy influence on souls turns them to Christ. Key words, kindness, influence, turns them. Wow. So through my, my random acts of kindness, I can lead people to Christ? I'm going to close with this, 1 Peter 2, 12. Live honorable lives as you mix with unbelievers. We're salt, we're light, family. Let's don't preach them a sermon. Let's be a sermon. It says live and mix with unbelievers even though they accuse you of being evildoers. Well, we're seeing that right now. You know, Christians aren't really loved right now in our nation. You realize that, right? For they will see, evildoers, unbelievers, will see, for they will see, for they'll see your beautiful works and have a reason to run to God in the day of visitation. Folks, you, you can make a difference. You can make a difference in your family, where you work, in your school. Take away, number one, change my mindset to an attitude of generosity. From greed to generosity. 
Look for ways to be generous, just to thank you. Uh, just looking somebody in the eyes and smiling at them and letting them know that, that they're okay. They're okay and you're okay, the book said. Number two, use your influence and resources to help and impact other people. What's it like to be on the other side of me? Am I noted for being cynical, sarcastic, grumpy, emotional, unstable? What's it like? Use your influence and resources to help and impact other people. Number three, daily get up and look for opportunities. Just like today, as we're out there today on, on the parking lot, please stick around a little bit. Have some fun. Meet some people. Uh, just introduce yourself. Just be kind. Let, let our visitors know that we're so glad they came today. We want them to come back. We want them to have experience with God. Number four, do unto others what you want them to do unto you. And that's it, folks. That's all she wrote. Did I help anybody today? Come on, let's thank God for the word today. Let's thank you for the word today. I want to thank you for watching the program today. You know, here we are all the last few weeks talking about how to increase our influence, how to make a difference with our life. You know, God put you and put me on this earth to make a difference. We've been talking about in the series how we can do it every, every day, each and every one of us. We don't have to have a degree. We don't have to have a certain aptitude, uh, network, net worth. We just every day look for opportunities to be kind. You know, kindness will set you apart today. It'll cause you to stand out, looking for opportunities. Maybe it's tipping somebody, a waitress at lunch, mowing a yard for a neighbor next door. Maybe it's helping somebody with a hospital bills. Maybe it's just a card. Maybe it's just a call. But all of us, God can use each and every one of us to increase our influence, be salt in life and make a difference. Maybe you've been watching today and you feel very insignificant. You feel like, you know, why did God put me on this earth? I don't really matter. I don't really count. Well, you found out that you do. And I just want to encourage you before we go off the air today, I want to ask you this most important question. Have you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? If you haven't, pray this prayer with me. Or you say, I'm a believer, Pastor, but you know what? I want to go deeper in God. I want to get closer to God. Then pray this prayer with me. Sit right where you're at. It's in Romans chapter 10. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I repent of all my sin. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me and He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. You know, I want to personally invite you to join me this Sunday at Church on the Rock at 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or a Spanish service at 2 o'clock. If we're adding value, if we're helping you, if we're feeding you, if we're making a difference, would you tell a friend? Until next week, don't forget, God is for you.